Uh, hello everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, the, today's talk is leveraging KVM as a debugging platform. So today we're going to see uh, how to do virtual machine introspection on KVM. So understanding the guest context from the outside, from the hypervisor level. Uh, why? Um, first, because uh, for a long time there was no introspection APIs on KVM. Uh, but the situation, let's say, changed quite recently, two years ago, when Bitdefender proposed a new API on the mailing list with the firm goal of having it uh, bringing commercial-grade introspection on KVM and having it merge upstream. So we're going to be interested in that, uh, this quality API. Um, and it changes things because it changes how we see hypervisors. Um, with these frameworks, uh, we can build very powerful tools from uh, dynamic mirror analysis to OS hardening and also fuzzing. So we have many possibilities, and one of them today is debugging, so full system debugging. So let's start. Uh, the agenda for today is to review the very int introspection technologies on KVM, then see how we, we can set up the, the KVM VMI, um, how we integrated uh, these APIs in libvmi have it with a demo, and how we leverage this to build uh, a debugging platform on top of KVM and the glimpse of the future. So if you remember, I was here last year at Ag.lu, uh, and I presented Ratu VMI. It was running on Zen. It was a Rada2 plugin, which aimed to understand the guest context and debug a guest process from the host. Uh, it was hypervisor agnostic by design, but you couldn't debug on KVM. Why? Because there was no API at the time to listen on hardware events. So you couldn't do that. But it was feasible, but you didn't have the right API. Then, during the year 2019, I switched to working on the Python VMI GDB stub, so that I can use any GDB frontend, IDA, Rodare, or GDB. Um, and the project was uh, PyVMI DBG. And um, for High.Lu 2019, my goal is to make this run on KVM, of course, with the new APIs. So let's first review what are the uh, VMI APIs available on KVM, do a bit of history. So this is uh, a timeline. In, in uh, orange, you will have the patches available by the community. Uh, in green, you will have the upstream integration and greener, the alternate EPT RVI APIs available, which is uh, the best API. API. So for Xen, uh, VMI introspection uh, was always available since a long time. You can see it from some famous project like Zen Access or LibVMI here. Um, then if you look at VirtualBox, we have community patches thanks to WinBagility project. Uh, so orange because it's a community patch, it's not integrated upstream. Uh, you can also mention VMware. They had this uh, VMSafe API, but they deprecated, deprecated it uh, a few years ago. Uh, and then you have KVM. So what's the situation of KVM comparing to these hypervisors? Um, so to do VMI on KVM, first we can look at QEMU because there are very interesting VMI-based frameworks on QEMU in full emulation. We can talk about Panda or Decaf. These are um, doing taint analysis or doing symbolic execution, for example. Uh, so leveraging the full emulation of QEMU and instrumenting QEMU and also the famous uh, PyRebox to do my analysis. That's for KVM full emulation. But what about KVM itself? Uh, you have Nitro, uh, which is a framework to do syscall interception on KVM. Uh, and later on, I worked on this framework, actually. I uh, improved it to have a Python framework to understand the syscall arguments and, uh, and give a bit of semantic context. Uh, and I built the KVM VMI community on GitHub. Uh, then you have a FireEye RVMI, the full system debugger. Uh, then we have more recently Bitdefender KVMI subsystem. Uh, this is the one we are interested in today because it brings a complete API for KVM. Uh, and uh, they have integrated their patches in KVM VMI, the repo, the community on GitHub, so that you can rebuild everything uh, from KVM VMI uh, easily. So looking back to our timeline, we can uh, see we have Nitro here in 2011. So it's a uh, light uh, orange because it's only doing Cisco interception. And then the situation changed in 2017 because you have multiple frameworks. And today we are interested in this API uh, and what it changes for KVM. So if you want to have an overview of this Bitdefender KVMI uh, subsystem, 
Uh, it's interesting because you have uh, the same, let's say, API you can find already on Xen. You can query the VM hardware states, read the physical memory, the VCP registers. You can listen for hardware events, control registers, CR3, for example, MSRs, interrupts, memory accesses, uh, descriptors, and hypercalls. And you can also inject page faults, which is really important. You can see the full API in libkvmi.h. Sorry for the long URL. Uh, I will release the slides afterwards. So why did they do it? Uh, at the moment, the target audience for KVMI subsystem are security software offers that wish to perform forensics on newly discovered threats or to implement another layer of security uh, by locking the kernel. And locking the kernel is important. Like it means that from the page table of the hyper, uh, the second layer of page tables, you will lock the you will lock um, the the kernel page tables and uh, enforce uh, the text section, the data section, the driver objects, the SSDT, the IDT, and you prevent uh, OS corruption or compromission from the hypervisors. So you write a, a security tool by uh, do, and doing OS hardening using, using these APIs. So this, this is really interesting. Um, now how to set up and configure KVM VMI, uh, which integrates these patches. Uh, you can go to github uh, slash kvmvmi slash kvmvmi dash dash recursive dash dash branch kvmi, lots of kvmi. Uh, you have to recompile kvm and qmu. Uh, so it's running on, the latest version is version 6, running on 5.00 rc7. And uh, so you have to recompile both and install a new version, a modified version. And then you have to pass some new arguments to qmu. Uh, QMU now has a bunch of new arguments, but most of all a socket parameter. And this is the socket that will be used to, to talk to the introspection tool, between the introspection tool and QMU. Um, this is how to, to set up. You will find this on the wiki also. Um, now let's talk about libvmi. Because to make the most out of this API, we have to integrate it into a high level uh, library, of course. Um, you have libvmi. libvmi provides you first this unified low-level VMI API on Xen, KVM, and Berflank. Uh, it provides you this page table parsing uh, to translate a virtual address to a physical address. Uh, it provides you this uh, event API to do single step interrupt uh, on all hypervisors with the same API. And also, given that you provide a JSON profile for the kernel, uh, you, it will try to find the kernel uh, in the memory and apply this profile, and you will have symbols. So it gives you a semantic translation on top of uh, your VM. So this is really important to build any application. So we wanted to integrate KVM into this. And today, we are fixing this, the events um, layer of libvmi to go talk to KVM. So, concretely, uh, I'll show you the Python bindings because it's easier to understand. Uh, first, at the top, we initialize the libvmi library by sending also the KVM socket. My socket is slash tmp slash introspector. Um, then I'm defining my CR3 callback, uh, where I'm just going to get the CR3 value and just counting it. Uh, then I'm going to pause my VM and register this create and register a CR3 write event. And I'm listening for the first 100 events. So let's do a demo. Oh. Why there is no... I guess I don't have internet connection. That's great. Ah, yes. Oh, thank God. Okay, so... Yeah, Wi-Fi. <laughs> ah, there is a cable. Uh, what, this? Uh, wait, maybe I can connect to, I'm on hack.lu. Uh, I'm going to use my 3G connection. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> because it's saving me. <laughs> hey, you'll see, look at this. Beautiful. Uh, okay, so the Python binding. So first, I'm, it is a demo of the CR3 event. Um, I'm going to do uh, this on Windows XP, and I'm sending the socket parameter. So I'm intercepting CR3 events. You can see the change here. And then I have my counter at the end. Uh, I counted them, so on Windows XP. Really cool. 
Uh, then another example of using memory events. Uh, so I'm just putting a memory event on the current RIP. Uh, and I have plenty of events. I can see the frame, the offset, and the permission. And finally, we're going to do a demo of the MSR uh, interception. So for this, I'm just going to post the sub the VM and, and start it because uh, the operating system is configuring the MSRs when it boots. So we want to stop the VM, start the application, and then start the VM again. Windows XP is booting. Uh, we are listening for events, and we can see some MSRs uh, popping up. OK, yes, 0x8b something. I don't know what these MSRs are, but the uh, the CPU is requesting them. And this is important. This is the syscall entry points with EIP, CS, and ESP. Uh, so we just configure this entry points, and then we have a bunch of other MSRs. So we, we intercepted this value from the virtualization layer. OK, we can stop. So this is the demo of the events integration in libvmi. OK. And um, to do an example of OS hardening, here uh, at the top, you have the exploitation code for Ethanol Blue. Uh, what is it doing is that it changes the CCenter EIP. Uh, and the rest instruction is write MSR. And this is the instruction that we're going to intercept on the introspection layer. We, we have an event in our application. And well, uh, in the same way, um, only the operating system is supposed to be changing this value, and it's supposed to do once when the OS boots. So when we see this value being changed twice, there is something really wrong happening. So we might uh, deal with the situation and kill the process, for example. So we, we, we can catch that in the introspection layer. And doing OS hardening, Cisco entry point OS hardening. But now, how to leverage all of this, all of these events and semantic layer to build a debugging platform? Well, I have a demo for you running on Windows 10 x64. Uh, first, I have on the left my uh, KVMI kernel in a VM. And I have a VM which is low here, Windows 10. I'm going to start Microsoft Paint. Great. Uh, then I'm going to start the debugger by targeting Microsoft Paint, you can see here. Uh, I'm going to start also Radar 2 to connect with the GDB protocol 64 bit. OK, we are connected. Uh, if I'm printing the 10 first instruction, I can see this. I can also print, print the threads. You can see the threads are live. And if I look back at the beginning of the logs, I can see that uh, the debugger gave me the kernel address base, the base address, the e process of Microsoft Paint, and the threads. Uh, I'm going to copy this kernel base to load the symbols at the right location. Uh, with uh, OBA, the address, and my NTOS kernel exists. So I will have a bunch of symbols. If I'm going to the flag space symbols in Radar 2, I have plenty of symbols. Great. Loaded at the right location, uh, the kernel base. So what I want is put a breakpoint on NT write file. Um, I'm going to set this breakpoint. And if you look at the logs, I'm going to do continue with DC. So the VM is executing now. And uh, looking back at the VM, we're going to open Notepad. And we're going to, tr to trigger an anti-write file from Notepad. So I'm writing a bunch of stuff, doing save on my desktop, writing a file at toto.exe. Yes. And if, well, Windows 10 is very noisy. But what I'm going to do is find this call to anti-write file from Notepad. And you can see it right here. Like, I have this wrong process, notepad.exe, because it's not the one I'm targeting, so I'm just skipping it. Uh, so I'm, and so we can close this. Let's draw a little smile in Microsoft Paint. And if I hit save, the VM is paused. Because uh, this is the process we are targeting. And if you look back in the radar, we are at anti write file. Great. Uh, we can do a couple of continue also to eat a new, uh, some break, more breakpoints. Uh, and we still are, are there. Um, we can also uh, display the debug view of Radare. So there is a slight bug when I'm doing the first single step. It's jumping not right after the breakpoint, but somewhere else. I have to fix that, see what's happening in KVM. Uh, but the rest of the single step is working. You can see I'm uh, the register update in the, in the screen, and I'm doing plenty of single step. Uh, that's cool. That's working. Couple more. Okay. And the last thing I want to do is to close my debugger. And if you look at the VM, nothing happens. It's running perfectly fine. So we actually debug Microsoft Paint uh, on the fly on Windows 10 on KVM, which is really cool. Thank you.
Yeah. So there is, of course, room for improvement for this debugger. Uh, I'm doing this in my free time, but uh, I already implemented the entry point logic to catch a process when it's being created. Uh, but I'm missing a, a proper page fault injection to actually reach these entry points and put a breakpoint there. But the logic is implemented. Um, also, we can speak about symbol load loading. We can enumerate the loaded libraries and uh, get their image path on the disk and use uh, tools like libguestfs to copy from the guest to the host dynamically. Even if the VM is running, it will, it will work. Uh, uh, stealth breakpoints are not yet implemented. That is just raw in three memory. But we can guard these uh, breakpoints with memory access. We just showed that before that memory access were working. So we can put an event there, and when patch guard is reading our breakpoints, we can just skip it and re return fake data. Uh, or maybe later on in, you know, using uh, alternate slide API in KVMI. Uh, and of course, add more stubs, LLDB, KD, uh, more stubs. And now a glimpse into the future, what I'm expecting. First, I would like to see this API, of course, merge upstream. That would be fantastic news. Uh, because KVM will join the list of hypervisors providing uh, upstream integration for VMI with Xen. And we also motivate maybe uh, VirtualBox to have these VMI, VMI APIs. Uh, so having this maybe uh, next year or in the year after merge in the KVM tree. Um, and then, if you look at the use cases you have on introspection, uh, this is a bunch of use cases. I told you it was quite diverse. I just saw you debugging. Uh, you have memory analysis. If you plug framework like Dracuf on KVM, you can have live memory analysis. If you plug a recall of volatility and you analyze the whole cloud uh, and you do this live memory analysis, you don't need to post the VM and have a, a service interruption on your VMs. You just you can just analyze the raw memory and see if there is uh, a process running there that shouldn't be running. Uh, you can do OS hardening. I just demonstrated be this before by securing the Cisco uh, entry points and also basic monitoring and fuzzing. And how do we achieve this goal? Because these applications on the left, they are very complex, very complicated. Uh, first, I think we need to be a uh, multi-hypervisor. We have this, have this, this multi-hypervisor approach, and we need to solve what's in between. It, we need to build this high-level VMI library that will provide by default stealth breakpoints and also an understanding of the execution context. If I'm posing the VM, I should be able to ask the library, where am I right now? In which module? Uh, what is, is there, there are addresses or symbols that I know? And uh, having the library provides you many things by default. Uh, and of course, it should be cross-platform because you want to have it on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS because of hyper to be compatible with all of these hypervisors. Um, and there is nothing, nothing prevent us from uh, plugging also emulators on top of that. Uh, think about QEMU, Unicorn, or Box. Uh, on emulators, you are not limited by the virtualization layer. You can intercept anything. And you should be able to plug that also in the same library to understand the guest context on emulators. Looking also at the concrete ap the application that already exists, you have well, PyVMIDBG, Icebox, RVMI, uh, the DCAF and Panda framework, uh, Pyrebox, and Rakuf. Uh, for live forensics, you have volatility and recall. You should be, you should, plug them on hypervisors and emulators, and Apple Pie, the recent Apple Pie by Brandon Fork, uh, to do fuzzing. So what we want to do is to plug all of these applications on uh, to have multi-hypervisors and multi-emulator support by building this library. And I actually actually started to build this library. I build this uh, started to build this low-level layer, this unified low-level VMI API uh, in Rust. Uh, why Rust? Because Rust is fast. Rust is memory safe. Uh, and when you're doing OS hardening, you're basically just processing untrusted input from the guest. The last thing you want is to open a new attack surface on the host. Um, and it's very well suited for system programming. So what I have right now is uh, I have Two drivers, Xen and KVM. Uh, this is a, an API example of the library I have. Uh, I have uh, three functions implemented. I have pose, resume, and read physical memory. And with this, you can already dump the physical memory of the guest. So it's already, you can already do applications on top of that. But the rest of the work is plugging, is binding more, uh, more APIs, only macro VMI, of course. Uh, to have, and more, have, have more hypervisors. I'm working on the Hyper-V driver right now. 
Uh, and as a conclusion of this talk, my core message is here is that first, uh, we have a native uh, commercial grade uh, introspection API on KVM, which is becoming a reality. And this is, make, this is big news. Uh, you have a new LibVM at KVM driver, which is able to intercept hardware events, like I showed you, to fully exploit all of these capabilities of this new API. Uh, we have uh, I demonstrated the possibilities of using this for full system debugging on Windows 10, and this is just one of the many possibilities uh, that you and the use cases you can have. And finally, to make the most out of this and for to look for the future, we have to build this high-level cross-platform and multi-hypervisor VMI abstraction library, the, which is a condition to let the VMI ecosystem grow and mature. This is a condition that all the community, hypervisor communities will work together on the same libraries, and when we solve the same problem together, we build better libraries and we can focus on higher on other problems, which is building VMI apps and not understanding the guest context, for example. So thanks to Mihai Dontu and Alabet Lazar from Bitdefender. Uh, as an anecdote, they added single step support in a rush uh, because for, uh, one month before this talk, this talk, I realized that there was no um, support for single step event and I was, I was like, a bit stressed, but they did it and it works. Thank you very much. Um, thanks to Adi Azam. Uh, he added the Linux support to PyVM DBG. It's working on Zen right now, uh, but hopefully it will work on KVM and I will be able to test it. Um, thanks to Peter Binis, Tamas, Kaylingian from LiveVMI, and of course the Hacklu team. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much.